Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here today with a brand new tag that I just created. I'm calling it uh, Under Further Consideration, and this is a look back at some of the reviews that we've put together uh, and say, do they hold up? Do they, do they pass the test of time? Or what has maybe matured or grown uh, since we first looked at it? So what I'd like to do is, uh, is first thank Sean the Book Maniac for, for kind of putting the, the idea in my head from, from one of his tags. Uh, so he's done a whole series called the Alphabet Soup Tag. And in that series, what he's done is taken different letters of the alphabet and then created prompts around that. So in one of the questions for N is for novella, he asked, what hasn't aged well? What, uh, and I started thinking about this and then I wondered what other people would say if we did a deeper dive into this topic. So what I've done with this tag is I'm asking people to pick, to go back through your reviews, go back through whatever method you use to, to, to keep track of things. Uh, I know some people use handwritten journals, some people do Excel spreadsheets, some people do uh, Goodreads, some people do multiple uh, or many of these types of things. So go back through your, through your notes and, and pick three different time horizons. And so for me, I'm going to pick four years ago, two years ago, and then earlier this year. In those time horizons, look for books that fit the next three prompts. The first prompt is maybe what was something that you were possibly too generous to now that you look now now that you look back. So in other words, under further consideration, maybe you were you were a little too too generous to that to that book for the rating. What is something that you undervalued that now in retrospect, you actually like it more than you, than you rated it at that point? And then the third, what is something that stayed with you, a book or a character or something that you remember and that remains vivid? So pick three books and three time horizons. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll show you how I'm thinking of it. So the first for me, um, so I'm looking at four years ago and I, I think that I was over generous to All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durer. When I think about this book, I think uh, maybe it was influenced by proximity to other books. So it might have been better than what I had read right around, around there. Um, and I do know that I really... I really liked a, a character and her story in, in the book. Uh, but ultimately, it was not enough to, to give the rating that I gave. Um, I think I gave it a, a four, but it probably should have been like a 2.5 to maybe a three. You have these two different children in these two, in these two places. Uh, the daughter, the girl, little girl, is being raised in France. And what I loved about the story was the community um, aspect to it and her relationship with her grandfather, which was very beautiful. Um, and so that that I, I, I really appreciated the book for. But the rest of it was maudlin. It was contrived. Uh, it was forcing emotional reactions where some I didn't, I just didn't feel. And uh, yeah, so I, it wasn't as good as I, as I had rated it. What's a book that I undervalued at the time that I think better of now? Um, and that is, I've spoken before about how much uh, certain, certain books of Ishiguru's I just, I really love. Uh, this is The Very Giant by Kashu Ishiguru. Uh, I think what made me love this more in retrospect was reading more calm and in slowly paced books was is number one because this is a very slow paced book purposefully it's a story of an uh, older couple who believe that their son is missing and they try to go out looking for their son it's set in a in a fantasy world uh, that mist has come and mist um, is taking away people's memories uh, and so they're on a journey and, and there's Arthurian legend in here. It's that type of fantasy uh, book. Uh, and, but I, 
in retrospect, uh, I really loved the journey of the older people. And uh, after my father passed away last year, I think I, I think about grief. I, I understand grief in a different way. And so much of this book uh, gives you the feeling of grief, the confusion, the the slog, the slog of life, the the how difficult it is to to move forward, and and so this this ended up being a much more experiential book in retrospect than it was when I when I read it uh, originally, and I I do love Arthurian legend, and I just respected what was done here. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think of this much in, in higher, higher form. I think I rated it three and I'll, I would rate it four now. Uh, what has stayed with me or made an impact on me or something that I refer to, I actually talk about this one pretty frequently. And this is What We See When We Read by Peter Mendelssohn. Peter Mendelssohn uh, is a new author. He just recently published his first novel. But he's best known as being an, an illustrator and graphic designer for book covers. So he most famously did the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. Uh, and this is a charming, wonderful book about what happens to us when we, when we read, what happens to our mind, and, the, and he deconstructs the magic of reading. Uh, this is... A, a delightful book. It is something that I think about frequently, and I, I, I know I've mentioned it a few times to a few people, and I, I find it to be quite clever and well done and interesting to read, and, and much. It's not a novel. It's not a novelty book. It's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good book, and it's given me a lot of, a lot of things to ponder. So very, very happy to, uh, to have read that that year. Okay, two years ago then, uh, what did I overrate? Uh, I think I overrated this one. This is Future Home of the Living God by Louise Erdrich. I, this one definitely was suffered from proximity. So I've been reading a lot of dystopian books around the same time, uh, and, I, and especially feminist dystopian. And I think I liked this better than the others, but it didn't warrant the rating that I gave it. I think uh, I think I would give it at this stage about a three, maybe two point seven five. Um, a lot I like, and I think it also a bias toward the author. Uh, I like what Louise Erdrich is doing, and I was, and I wanted to support her move into this kind of science fiction. Um, ish, Dystop I guess dystopian is a better word. But ultimately, this hasn't really stayed with me and I'm going to sell this back now. So uh, this has been a great way for me to find what I want to remove from my shelves and give a little more space. Next up uh, was one that I underrated. <clears throat> and I think I underrated this one because of the format. Um, so I listened to it in audio and I think I suffered because of it. And this is Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall. So I didn't, and I don't think I gleaned every, all the juice from the audiobook that I could have. So I think that, that in retrospect, this is a much better book that I didn't give enough time and I should have switched formats. But luckily I'm going to be rectifying that because um, I'm actually going to read this, the physical book, along in a, with a few people we're going to do a a buddy read, um, read along, I think in anticipation of the third of the series that's gonna come out in March. So excited to get an opportunity to rectify that. <clears throat> and then um, this, what was the surprise or what stayed with me? What's so funny is Britta Bowler just mentioned something in her week, her week of, of reading uh, wrap up that she just did, that she just read this book. And I remember reading it as a digital arc and it really surprised me. Uh, the book is Too Fat, Too Slutty, uh, Too Loud, The Rise and Reign of Unruly Women. And this is by Anne Helen Peterson. Uh, so this is really looking at uh, celebrities and, and female celebrities and, and how they're treated and how we view them and how they're pigeonholed or, 
or or how their careers uh, have have gone, and and it's really about our about our reaction to them and deconstructing that. I was stunned at how much I like this book. What this book did for me was help to uncover some internal misogyny that I didn't even know I had. Um, so you know the patriarchy is strong and the the uh, the lessons that we that we get taught are are dangerous and and it's a a constant opportunity to unlearn some of those bad behaviors. And one of the things that I learned about myself was how uh, inappropriate I had been thinking about Kim Kardashian and how she uh, how she dealt with her pregnancy and how she thinks about her body. And as a feminist. I firmly believe and uh, that every woman needs to be able to make her own choices and her own, make her own decisions about her body. And yet I was sitting in judgment of Kim Kardashian because she uh, was an easy target. So being able to deconstruct uh, her, her journey with, through her pregnancy and how it made her feel as her body changed and, um, and how it, it the lack of control that she had and decisions that she made was was very humbling for me to look at that um, and uh, being someone who has not had has purposefully not had children i learned a lot i learned a lot and i also found um, a section about madonna and aging to be fascinating so re so i i still think about that i still think about that book and then from this year, uh, so I was hand sold uh, a book, a little, a, a whole life, not a little, life, a whole life by Robert C. Fowler. And the reason I was, I was sold this one is because I was also sold uh, a month in the country by Carr. I know his last name is Carr. I forget what his first name is. I'll, I'll link it in the show notes. Uh, and while I can see how it could be thought of, I think it's because, uh, because of a rural setting and all of that, it, it didn't have the same emotional resonance. Um, and I didn't connect with, with the character of a whole life in the same way that I did a month in the country. Uh, so I so I think I would rate it a little less. I, I think I rated it higher because I really like the bookseller who sold it to me. And I think I, uh, optimism bias was, was strong in that, in that call. What did I underrate? I think I underrated a, a historical fiction book that uh, maybe because of the genre I underrated, maybe a little internal uh, bias uh, snobbery I had, I don't know. Um, or maybe just upon reflection because I haven't read so many of uh, the kind of this, this, this time period, which is the Middle Ages. And the book uh, was The Last Hours by Minette Walters. And this is the first in the Black Death, Black, uh, Death series. Uh, I I can't stop I, I can't stop looking for number two. So I don't want to pay full price. I haven't found it in our, in my library system. So every time I go to a used bookstore, uh, I'm always on the hunt looking for it uh, because it just I I want to know what happens to those characters. I'm invested in that story, and I'd like to to follow through and and see. I have a feeling it's not going to go well because it's called the Black death series and it's about the plague <laughs> but you know i'd like to see who survives it uh and then the, su the surprise from this year uh i'm not going to change my rating so i didn't give this the highest marks but i do believe that you can maybe not love a book and still admire it and this is a perfect example of that this is the old drift and this is by nam wali serpel uh, this is in a lot of conversation. I think it's in a lot of conversation that I'm a part of because it's, uh, Ber it's she's a Berkeley professor. Uh, I live in Berkeley, California. Uh, so it's it's something that's kind of in the ether and people talk about. It's also been hyped by a lot of, uh, the blurb was by Rushdi, uh, and it's it, I think it was nominated for a few awards. I, my, my rating stands because there's still, a, there's a lot of, of mixing of genre, genre and style in this book. So it makes it feel a little patchwork quilty in a way that, that didn't feel consistent. I have no, I, I didn't 
object to having the different genres interplayed. I thought that was interesting, but it doesn't follow through in a consistency. So something that'll happen with one character won't won't follow with her lineage. It's a multi-generational story set in Zambia. Uh, but there's so much to love about this. And there's so many uh, of the characters and the character stories, as well as the kind of Greek chorus of mosquitoes and and the atmosphere and and some of the some of the characters. So while it didn't hold together as a full body of work for me, as a full a full novel, uh, I still I still remember very very fondly large portions of of this book. So yeah. Okay, so I would love to tag anyone who's interested in doing this this uh, book tag. Please feel consider yourself tagged. I would also like to to offer to anyone who would like to do this but doesn't have a book to tag. I don't want you to feel left out. Leave your thoughts. Do this and leave your your thoughts and how you would answer it in the comments below. I'd love to know. I can think of some people. I won't put you on the spot, but. You might know who you are because we talk on Voxer every once in a while for, and people I've done buddy reads with. I'd love to, to know your thoughts here. Um, and, but I think specifically I'd like to ask Juan, I'm just one reader. He and I were kind of chatting about it yesterday. So I, I, he said he, he would be willing to do it. So please, I would love to know your thoughts. Um, I would also love to know Robert from Bar Hordes, if you wouldn't mind doing this, uh, that would be great. Um, I think I also just watched um, uh, someone's someone's video and they mentioned uh, that after thinking about it a little more, they don't like the book as much as they originally thought. And that was Celia. So Celia, if you wouldn't mind doing this tag, that would be great. I would love Sharon from Sharon Goforth to do this tag as well. She's a prolific reader. Uh, and so I think, I hope you kept records of what you read and what you've rated. I'd love to see your thoughts. And Britta Bowler, I would love to, to know what you think about this. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Thanks for indulging me and look forward to talking to you later. Bye.